If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Declaring war on the New World Order. TruthRadioShow.com And welcome to TruthRadioShow.com and welcome to our in-depth Bible comprehensive study of 2 Thessalonians and we're on to chapter 3. So if you missed chapters 1 through 2 and actually 1 Thessalonians, I would encourage you to go back and watch them before I even begin to dive into this chapter. So this is the last chapter of 2 Thessalonians before we dive into the book of 1 Timothy, which I'm excited to do. Uh, it, it's amazing how quick these things go by. So we a specific Bible study approach. We do it every one of these videos. We do uh, one chapter, I'm sorry, one video for each chapter. So we have a prayer, we, I'm sorry, we pray for wisdom and understanding, so let's do that right now. So Lord Jesus, Yeshua Messiah, uh, we come before you and uh, ask you to forgive us all individually, the sins we committed, any transgressions, any trespasses, any abominations that any of us may have committed today, Lord. We ask you to pour your blood upon us and just cleanse our garments, Lord. Cleanse us from sin and thank you for just being the remission, the way out, the remission of sin, the way out of this sinful nature. And Heavenly Father, we ask you once again to give us the Divine Holy Spirit to write your word upon our hearts today, in this case, the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, the final chapter here in 2 Thessalonians. And we ask you to give us divine wisdom and to help us understand everything that you have to offer in this context today. In your mighty name, we love you so much. We pray for everybody out there that needs prayer for whatever reason. And if it's within your will, we ask you for it to be done. And we love you so much. Amen. So we read the uh, scripture in context. And remember, context is key. Very important to understand these things. Uh, when we, I know we sound repetitive. If you've been watching me all this time, I have to do this every video because sometimes I forget. So context is key. And let the scripture interpret scripture. Don't lean on your own understanding. And like I say all the time, don't take my word or anybody else's word for it. Read it for yourselves. Simple as that. So, um, if you listen at ShakeAwakeRadio.com, thank you so much, and I would encourage you, because it's audio edition, open up your Bible, because I encourage people f to read it for themselves. This way, if I make a mistake, you guys let me know. And same thing on YouTube, we've got the uh, King James Bible up on screen. If I make a mistake or anything like that, I encourage you guys to say, hey, Dan, you made a mistake. You know what I mean? That's what we're supposed to do. I ain't chopping dying. So, and a lot of times they made a mistake. He came back to, hey, I was wrong about this, whatever the case, and... Uh, so there's no room for egos or anything like that in this in this industry, I call it, because this is the industry of God, not that it's a corporation. I'm just saying this is uh, God's word, and we must remain humble at all times. And when we preach the word of God, it's, you know what I mean, we got to rely on the Holy Spirit, because without the Holy Spirit, I would never be able to do this, ever. You know, I mean, that's how important this is. So uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. So... Let's go on with this here, and, then, and we're going to start the uh, first, uh, yeah, first Timothy chapter one uh, next week. So, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it with you. So, the word of the Lord is glorified, right? It's not glorified for us. We don't, you know, we don't use the word of God to glorify me or anybody else that's teaching it. Um, yeah, I, don't, you know, I mean, I even hate to call myself a teacher because a lot of times when, um, you know, you get these famous preachers out there, people seem to be glorifying them more than the actual word. You know what I mean? And that, that's wrong. I would never call myself anything other than a servant of the Lord. I'm not an apostle, not a prophet, and nobody should even be calling themselves any of those things. And if they do, you guys need to tune them right out. We're servants of the Lord. That's all we are. Doing the Lord's work. And all glory goes to the Father. That's it. Plain and simple. So again, finally, brethren, pray for us. And this is related to today too. We need to pray for everybody out there that's ministering the word of God. That the word of the Lord, which you're reading right now, may have free course. And be glorified, even as with you. And that we may be delivered from the unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith. That, that's true. Even though those of us in the faith, sometimes we doubt too. So sometimes we'll, you know, I'm not saying we lose faith or anything, but sometimes we doubt God. 
And what I even realized, oh man, I can't believe, uh, what am I going to do for tomorrow? Put your faith in the Lord. I know it's easier said than done, but you know, I mean, all of us at one time or another, like, you know, <laughs> without even realizing we doubt the Lord. That's just what men do. After all the stuff he's done for us, we're still, you know, we look at the apostles. That pure example. How many times has Jesus told him, dude, dude, you've been with me since all this, and now you doubt me? Are you kidding me? You see me do this, that, and the other thing, and you still doubt me? But, you know, well, steer yourself back to the faith of the Lord. So anyway, that we may all be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. That means, like, these people out there, just wicked, they hate God, they hate the word of God, they're unreasonable in any which way, you know what I mean? And, that you know, he's praying for deliverance from these people. For all men have not faith. And he's got that right. But the Lord is faithful. Who shall establish you and keep you from evil? And the Lord is faithful. No matter what. We, and nobody's got to tell me you don't. Right? We all are guilty of this one point or another. When you, you know, hang around with somebody for so long, you kind of get sick of them here and there. You know what I mean? The, the, the Lord doesn't do that. And then just evil people, they just say, use you for what you, they want to use you, then do, do away with you, right? The Lord doesn't do that. The Lord's always there. Even when we sin, it's shamefully sin, he's always there, ready to take you back. So who shall establish you and keep you from evil? He's going to establish you and keep you from evil. If you have that faith and assurance in the Lord, I mean, it's great. It's a beautiful thing. So, verse 4, and we have not, I'm sorry, we have confidence in the Lord touching you that you both do and will do things which we command you. So, Paul's telling these, you know, he's trying to minister to this church here, to go out and spread the doctrine of Christ. Saying, we have confidence, you guys, that you do both and will do things. Confidence in the Lord touching you. In other words, the Lord touching you, giving you uh, inspiration, healing, wisdom, everything that you need. That you both do and will do the things we command. And the command is not coming from Paul himself. No, he's just saying, hey, we need to go out and preach the word of God. The command comes from the Lord. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of Christ and into the patience waiting for Christ. Because even then, guys, uh, they didn't know when Jesus was returning. To them, it could have been any day. Same thing with us. We don't know. But we do know, you know, because at the time the scriptures were being written, you know, for the New Testament and all that. So now we know about when. We, again, we don't know the day of the hour. We don't put time stamps on things. But they didn't know this at the time. These books were still being compiled and all that. So at the time of Paul, he, you know, they're still waiting. But Jesus did tell them for these signs to come, and they don't know when the signs were coming. You know, the, the prophecies going through Matthew and everything else, right? So they didn't know that. And uh, now we know this because of the word of God here, of exactly what's to come you know, in sequence, in order. Then, you know, we say, all right, this is the season, because the scripture says you know the season, but not the day of the hour. And now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walks disorderly, and not after the tradition which we have received us. And this is not tradition of man, I want to point that out. Because usually when you hear tradition in you know, religions and all that, that's tradition of men. It's not tradition of God. This tradition he's talking about is walking with the Lord. So he's telling the people, I mean, if you want to go and miss the word of God, you want to walk that straight and narrow, we're commanding you to not, to withdraw yourself, I'm sorry, to withdraw yourself from every brother that walks disorderly. In other words, the people that's going to lead you to go out drinking, to do drugs, to do things that uh, one of us should not be doing. Let's put it that way. Withdraw yourselves and like don't you know associate with these people. So why are you doing this? You're falling off track and everything else. And meanwhile, that time you just spent all night and then you wake up uh, puking because you're drunk or something. That energy you just spelt right, you could have been using that for the Lord. 
and you just defiled yourself in many different ways, right? And, and we could use a million examples. So Paul's telling these you know, people of the church here, don't associate with these people that walk disorderly. And not after the tradition which we which he received of us. For yourselves know, hang on, may I think I can botch that up here. So he says, don't, you know, uh, withdraw yourselves from every brother that walks disorderly. And yeah, not after the tradition, all right, so not after the tradition which he received of us. So, all right, tradition here, he's talking about tradition, man, I'm sorry. I, um, I want to correct that. So when I mentioned tradition, he is talking about tradition uh, of man. Because he says, and yeah, not after the tradition of which he received of us. So don't walk after the tradition, which is tradition of men. So I want to correct myself on that. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for catching me on that here. So sometimes I'll uh, not see the not because I get so excited I read and I'm like, oh, we just messed up. So verse 7, for yourselves know how you ought to follow us. For we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. So I was telling the church there, you guys know. You already know, all right? And we have not behaved disorderly among you. Neither do we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travel day by and night, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. So I want to see what that context is chargeable. So, uh, and you always look up the biblical definition. <clears throat> With this char no, chargeable. So what does chargeable mean in the Bible? And they usually bring it up uh, to be burdensome or an accusation. So you always got to um, remember a lot of these words change over time. And you got to take it Paul's time. You know what I mean? So that's why you need to look up the biblical definition. Always have that in there in the Bible. Because I don't know what that would mean today, you know what I mean? So, uh, and it doesn't matter. It matters what. And that's why a lot of people misinterpret the Bible, because they'll automatically assume what it means today. There's a lot of words that have been changed and phrases that have been changed, complete different meanings since this, uh, uh, you know, the first century, yeah, versus today. 20 centuries later. <laughs> so, always look up the biblical meaning. So, again, it means um, to be burdensome or... An accusation. So he's saying, so, but we were brought labor and travel night and day that we might not be chargeable to anyone, any of you. So he's saying that we might not be a burden to any of you. Burdensome. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you who to follow us. So leaning by example, that's what Paul's saying. I don't, you know, we're not going to be burdens on you, but we need to lead by example. For even when we were with you, this we command you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. So if you look, understand what he's saying here, right? So neither do we eat any man's bread for naught. So for nothing. In other words, we just, we didn't freeload. That's what he's saying. But we brought with labor and travel. So basically, they would work for the food. They would do something to earn that food, so to speak, or the you know drink they have. They didn't get uh, handouts and they didn't free load. That's what he's saying. And plain and simple, if you don't eat work, you don't eat. You know what I mean? That's what he's saying. You gotta work for what you, you, you get. For we hear that there are some of which among you Disorderly, working not at all, but our busy buddies. So that sounds like a freeloader or something like that. Let me see. Uh, busy buddies in the Bible. I mean, the Bible. So it's uh, someone who meddles in the affairs of others, often under the guise of helping. Oh, okay. So somebody who portrays to be helping, but they're not. They're meddling in affairs. So Paul's talk, you know, some of these people in the church, yeah, I mean, they were dealing with this back then. Today, now it's more than ever. You got people in the churches out there 
who do the stuff constantly. Tons of false prophets, and they dealt with the stuff back then. It's even ten times worse today. For we hear that there are some of which among, walk among us are disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies, basically freeloaders here, yes. people just meddle in affairs of others, often under the disguise of helping. So they act like they're helping, but they're not. They're just making things worse. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with our quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Weary is like tired. Don't be weary in well-doing. And if any man obeys not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. So obviously these are orders that are the apostles, not just Paul here, the apostles, sorry, we got to set, set some standards and orders. you got to do that with anything. A business, a school, anything else has to be orders and st uh, standards. It can't be a free-for-all. And obviously, yeah, it's, uh, these are directed by the Holy Spirit because it wouldn't be here in the Scripture. So he's saying, if any man does not obey a, a word by this epistle, this is what we're reading now, his epistle, note that man. In other words, find out who it is. If that person, tell everybody who it is, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. So, yeah, these people, and of course you would give them, like, a person to church. If they come back and repent to later, hey, listen, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Yeah, you welcome back with open arms. That's what the Lord tells us to do. But if you've got somebody in your church or ministry that's doing this stuff, guys, you need to kick them out. To teach them a lesson. You know what I mean? If they come back with wholehearted repentance and all that, you know what I mean? Just call on the Holy Spirit to uh, help you judge the situation. Because you've got to keep ministries tight. The people who run ministries. Because there's always somebody out there, every, every one of them, I mean, John Pounds has warned me about that oh, uh, years ago. He said you'll run into people who would donate a lot of money to your ministry. Then they move in and try to take it over. And I've had that done. I caught him instantly and I was like, you know what, uh, yeah, it's, the money's not worth it. Same thing happened to John Pounds and nice to hear you. You got to be careful with these people, the snakes in the grass, they'll come in, be inspirational, They'll donate money. They'll do like like free givings, right? And I'm not saying anybody that does that, you know, is like that. But there are people who are like that. Just the point of taking over ministry, then destroying it, destroying it from within. So uh, yet count him again. I'll read this again, verse 14. And if any man doesn't obey our word by this epistle, note that man. You know, point him out and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. And yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Like I just got done saying. Peacefully say, hey, listen, we're done with your services. Thank you so much. And again, if that person comes back later and you know they truly repented, or they say they did, you know, invite them back in, but always watch, you know, keep a, you know, a close eye on them. Because sometimes people just get carried away too. Not everybody's an enemy or a snake in the grass. They just get carried away. And then, you know, there's a million reasons. So always like uh, be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. The salutation of Paul with mine own hand, which is a token in every epistle, so I write. So the epistle is what we call the Bible, uh, these chapters and all that stuff. So epistles, these books. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And this is the second epistle, the second letter yeah, to the Thessalonians, which was written from Athens. And remember, Paul's in prison here uh, at the time. That's why he's not here personally. He had to write these letters out before his time was coming. So, if you guys need any questions, I mean, I'm sorry, you need any answers or clarification on things, uh, just uh, hit me up in the comments. I know it's a short chapter here. Uh, it, it's cool because, like, some I don't put a time limit on these videos, 
As you all been following me, you should know that sometimes we spend over an hour on one chapter. And sometimes it's short. So unfortunately, this is one short yet. But if you got any questions or comments or anything like that, put it in the comment section, not the live chat, but the comment section, and I'll get back to you. Unless I'm in live chat with you, whatever the case. But if you do need to get a hold of me, um, here's my email here. Truth Radio Show at Outlook.com. Or hit me up with a prayer request, uh, anything you want. And I do check the comments, so uh, I'm pretty good at that, checking the comments. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, we're done with the Thessalonians, and we're moving on to First Timothy. Uh, so that's going to be pretty exciting. So um, thank you guys so much. And uh, check out my local listings on truthradioshow.com. Spiritual Warfare Friday, Breaking NWO, it's News, Prophecy, and Spiritual Warfare. We got our Bible series, our documentaries, and also the links to all our brothers networks, so Nicey TV, uh, FOJC Radio, ShakeyWakeRadio.com, Visual Disturbance, Course Correction Radio, and, and more. So, yeah, love you all. God bless Shalom. Remember, you are the resistance. We'll see you for First Timothy chapter 1. God bless.